Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Andrei. In this video, I'll talk about importance of uh, vector databases when implementing uh, RAC uh, systems uh, to retrieve private data from your documents. And I'll try to explain it in simple words, as I understand. So I believe uh, this would be useful for you also, it and it will be easier to understand. And uh, as a result, it should help you to apply vector databases in a better way for your uh, data retrieval and for your use cases. So here you see sample uh, PDF documents, sample invoice that I'm using for my tests. It's a fairly simple document, but uh, it's uh, good enough for for the testing. I've got here seller, client information table, this uh, invoice header, and this uh, invoice uh, footer with the totals and so on. <clears throat> so what we'll do? I'll try to fit this document into the uh, simple vector database, right? And uh, uh, we'll uh, try to uh, see, uh, based on, 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 on splits, uh, how well uh, the data will be retrieved and, and the, at the end how this would imply uh, LLM performance. We're using um, uh, local uh, LLM. In this case, uh, tests are executed with Mistral uh, LLM 7 bits. Uh, so, uh, seven, 7B, sorry, and uh, if you look into the project over here, this uh, ingest, and we're using um, very simple, uh, f even not a vector database, but uh, uh, vector library uh, files, and the same and the same uh, concept that I explained in this video would apply to other vector databases or uh, libraries, whatever. Okay, so uh, if we start, we see here that this uh, invoice document I using uh, I split into uh, 300 characters, and, uh, and then there are I think uh, three or four chunks are being created uh, for this uh, document. So there are around 1,000 characters uh, for this invoice. So I split into the chunks uh, by 300, and uh, uh, in a rack implementation. Uh, here we, from the vector uh, storage, we uh, extract a predefined number of uh, uh, splits. So, uh, so by default it's two, but uh, for my testing I was using uh, value number one and value two. And this means if we uh, tell uh, vector storage to receive a single uh, split, it's just uh, one chunk will come. If we tell to return two, this means two chunks will come and uh, either one or two will go to LLM uh, and LLM would produce uh, information out of this uh, chunk data. So the idea is uh, that we don't send entire invoice data to LLM, uh, but we send, send only re relevant chunks that um, vector storage thinks that uh, those chunks are related to the query that the user is asking about the data, and then we send only the subset of data to LLM. So with this simple invoice, uh, we could obviously send entire invoice data to LLM, but typically if you would work with larger documents, then uh, for LLM it's easier to process uh, chunks of data instead of working with entire large documents. So it's much easier to work on a subset of the data. So this is the idea basically behind the uh, vector databases, that vector databases provide you like a first layer. Uh, they uh, extract uh, uh, data chunks that are uh, uh, similar to the query that user is asking about, and then proper detailed answer uh, is generated by based on uh, generated from LLM based on those chunks that are provided initially from the vector storage. So that's the idea. And this shows the, uh, to prove that I, I did a simple test and I'll explain it to you. So uh, in my uh, in initial test, I specified uh, to return just a single chunk from the vector storage. And the question was, uh, retrieve two values, uh, total gross worth and invoice number and form a response in JSON. And because I specified just a single chunk of data to be returned, this is what I got, I'm getting from the vector database and there's a way to print the information that the vector database is returning uh, over here 
on the query embeddings, you'll see that, uh, for example, I'm uh, fetching data from the vector database, and then I uh, doing a retriever uh, from the retriever. I'm getting relevant documents using the query, and uh, based on the number of uh, splits that are set to be returned, then I'm getting the result. And this is basically what I'm printing here. And uh, by the way, the source code, f uh, what, which I'm showing here, is available on my GitHub, and you'll find the URL to the source code below the video. Okay, so uh, what we're getting as a result, uh, uh, obviously we're getting the footer of the invoice with all the totals. And here uh, I, see, I can see 212.09, and this is the total gross worth. And invoice number uh, on opposite is on the header of invoice. And obviously invoice number, uh, it, it would not make it to this split because this split is, uh, is, uh, represents data from the footer. And then I uh, with and and then I ask the same question, uh, LLM, and uh, with the same single split, which will be sent essentially to LLM, and this is what I get, uh, what answer I get from LLM. So I, uh, I even even the total gross worth is uh, returned incorrectly. Uh, because uh, LM is not able to find information inside the split for the invoice number and everything is gets messed up and uh, totally wrong answer is produced. And then another test with the same question. I say that I want a vector database to return two chunks of data which is similar to our to the query user is asking. And I repeat then the same question, and then I get two chunks. So the first one is the same like before, it's a footer, and the second one is a header. Uh, and now vector database, because we told to return two chunks of data, it was able to return uh, data for, uh, for both invoice number and for the total value located in different places in the document. And over here, obviously, we get invoice number is included. Now those two chunks are being sent to the LLM and we get this nice answer from LLM. Uh, total gross worth 200, 212.09 and this is the invoice number. And this, this time it worked fine. So to summarize, uh, to implement uh, official RAC, it's, uh, uh, it's not only a single rule to have a strong performing uh, LLM model, uh, but it's also important to pay attention how you implement uh, vector storage, how you run uh, uh, queries uh, against the vector storage, how you split uh, the data that uh, is being returned from, from the vector storage, and uh, uh, basically how you split the original document and how you store those chunks in the vector storage and so on. So based on different sets of data, you should do uh, different tests and see what split is the optimal uh, for the queries that user is asking and so on. So uh, it, there's no golden rule. It's uh, always you need to understand how the vector storage works, uh, what is the result comes from the vector storage, uh, and and then you should you can see the quality of the LLM answers and so on. So hopefully this simple explanation was useful and uh, you'll be able to apply it in your practical work. So see you next time. Bye.